Hello developers, my name is Naman and in this video I'm going to teach you how to deploy the apps that you make with the Replit agent. So if you're making apps with the Replit AI agent and you want to publish those apps and you want users to be able to use and access your apps, you can do that by deploying your app. So deployment basically means publishing your app so that other people can use it. Now, deployment happens on servers and Replit uses servers provided by Google so essentially, we're going to be using Google's servers to deploy our app. Now, there are four different types of deployment in Replit, but before getting into those details, in order to get to this screen right over here where you can deploy, you want to click on the button in the top right corner that says deploy. So whenever you're building in Replit, whether that's with the Replit AI agent or anything else, you're always going to see this deploy button in the top right corner. So you always have the option to deploy. Now, once you click on it, you're going to see this screen right over here, and then you get to choose between these four different deployment types. So I'm going to go into the details on each of these types and which one is best for you. And then I'm going to walk you through the process of actually deploying the page, the app or the website. So the four different types of deployment on Replit are reserved VM, auto scale, static pages and scheduled jobs. So these are the four different types of deployment. And the first and the most popular type of deployment is auto scale deployment. So as the name suggests, it scales deployment based on the amount of users. So let's say you have nobody visiting your app, then the deployment costs you nothing. But if you have one user, then the deployment automatically scales up to one user. So it uses the servers and the machines for one user. And then let's say you have a thousand users, then the deployment scales up to handling a thousand users. If you get a million visitors or a million users, then the deployment scales up to handle a million users. If it goes back down to a hundred users, then it scales down to handling a hundred users. So that's what auto scale is, and it's the best choice for most apps. So if you have an app that has a front end and a back end, and you've built your app with the Replit AI agent, auto scale is usually the best way to go because it's cost efficient and it only charges you based on the number of users. So if you have nobody visiting your app for a while, then it's not going to charge you anything. Alright, so that's auto scale. So if you want to start deploying your app with auto scale, you want to click on this deploy button, you'll see the screen, click on auto scale and you want to click on set up your deployment. So as you can see, it's giving us some details here on auto scale. So you get to scale up and down to meet demand exactly automatically scales from zero to any level of demand, making it inexpensive for most apps and effortless when you go viral. So if you have a lot of users, then it's effortless for you. And if you don't, then it doesn't really cost you much. So it's usage based pricing. So based on the number of users that are visiting your app, that's how much you get charged for deployment. So that's auto scale. So you want to click on set up your deployment, and it's going to take you to this page over here. So this is the machine configuration. And there's two things here. The first is the machine power and the second is the number of machines. So the machine power is how much power each machine is going to have um, that's running your app. So for example, imagine the server that we talked about, the Google servers that are running your application. Now how powerful do you want those servers to be? So you can click on this edit button right over here and you can increase the number of CPUs and you can increase the number of RAM as well. Um, I'm going to leave it here for now. You can also decrease that based on what you think is an estimate for the amount of people that are going to be using your app. If you want more CPUs to, to power your servers and your application, you can do that. You want more RAM, you can do that as well. So that's it for the machine power. And then this is the max number of machines. So if the number of users um, on your app go up way up, then if you want a lot of different machines to handle that, then you can increase the number of machines that will be in the server that handle your application. So that's up to you. I'm going to keep it as one machine and click on approve and configure build settings. So once you do that, it takes you to the screen where you get to choose a domain. So for example, if here I want to put in something like Naman teaches, I can do that. And it's an available domain. So anyone who goes to Naman teaches .app will be able to access my app. So this is a feature called private deployment. So if you only want specific people from your team to be able to access it, then you can keep it on. But if you want anybody who can uh, go to this link to be able to access it, you can turn it to off. 
Now this is build command and run command and usually when you're building apps with the Replit AI agent, Replit takes care of you and takes care of these for you automatically so you don't have to worry about that. And then there's deployment secrets which are basically the passwords in the app, the API keys and a bunch of secret stuff um, used in the development. Um, so Replit stores that all here as secrets and you can add some deployment secrets as well. Now this is a beta feature called pre-deployment security scan which basically identifies potential vulnerabilities in your app before you deploy it. So before deploying your app, run a security scan powered by Replit's partner, Samgrep, to identify potential vulnerabilities. So you can run this scan as well if you want. Um, that's completely up to you. And this button right over here gives you, um, you uh, the capability to configure which port your deployment uses. So you want to use port 5000, port 800, whatever you want to do, you can choose that by clicking on this right over here. So that's pretty much it for this deployment. If you click on deploy, it will take a couple of minutes. And then on this URL, namonteaches.replit.app, I would be able to access my application. So that is auto scale deployment. It's the most popular, the most common, and what I recommend if you're just starting out with building an app and you don't have too much time to get into what type of deployment is best for you. So that's auto scale deployment. Now we also have static pages. So let's say you've built a very basic website with just a front end, like a blog or a very basic uh, about me website or a website for your company that just tells what your company is about. Very, very basic websites that don't really have a complex backend. So then you can do static deployment. So this right here is static deployment and these aren't officially supported yet for agent applications. So this is only if you've built the app yourself, like on GitHub or something. But these are for basic websites with no backend server like I just mentioned. And these are more lightweight and a lot cheaper because it has no database and no data persistence. And it's suitable for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript sites. So that's static pages if you want that. Then there's scheduled. Now scheduled is used when you're running a script at a specific time. So let's say you want to run a script um, at a particular time every day or every week, then you can use scheduled. It's not too popular, but if that is something that you want to do, then you can see that right over here. So scheduled deployments run at a specified time and frequency configured by you, and it's suitable for internal tools, one-off tasks, and cron jobs. And then there's reserved VM. Now reserved VM is basically for long running jobs and apps. Now if you want an app with fixed resources and a fixed cost, that can handle a lot of users and a, and a low, low number of users with equal performance, then you should go for reserved VM because these servers are always on. So unlike auto scale, which automatically scales up based on the number of users, reserved VMs are always up and they ensure high uptime, minimizing disruptions for apps requiring persistent session data. So these are built at this price and these are suitable for bots, stateful APIs, web scraping, and long running jobs. So these are all the four different types of deployment and the process is pretty much the same as the auto scale once you click on set up your deployment. You just enter in the basic details that you want of the power, the compute, and all of that and it deploys your app for you. So once again, I'm just gonna go over here and you can see right over here, this is the computational power behind the deployment. So if you want your app to run on very powerful machines, then you can increase this right over here. You can increase the number of CPUs and increase the gigs of RAM. And if you want a lot of machines to power your deployment and your application, then you can increase the number of machines here as well. So this is a lot of compute. And this really depends on what type your application is. If you have a really heavy application, then you would want a lot of compute. But if your application is not too heavy, it's pretty lightweight, then you can use less compute and less machine power. So that really just depends on what you're building and you can always ask the agent for recommendations if you're not sure. So that's pretty much it for deployment and yeah, peace.